the main reason that I have my surgery is because I have a lot of pain. And uh, walking and working with the pain, it was very hard. So I told him, doctor, the pain is horrible. Just do it, the sooner the better. So you've decided on moving forward with your joint replacement surgery. I know you've made the right choice with White Memorial Medical Center. They have a great team, and they're gonna help you all along the way. I know what it's like being uncertain of all the details. So I'll go over some of those things with you now, and you can always review the information in the educational booklet and on the website. During this process, it's important that you ask your family and friends for support. Don't underestimate how much you'll need them in the upcoming weeks. You'll need someone to drive you home, helping you cook your meals, and taking you to your follow-up and therapy appointments. The staff's gonna be sure your stay's comfortable, and they're gonna do everything they can to help you recover quickly. But the number one factor in your recovery is you. What you do before and after surgery can make a big difference in your outcome. And it can mean getting back to the things you've been missing out on, most importantly, without pain. First, there are a few things you'll need to do before the day of surgery, like collecting vital information, home preparation, and what you should and shouldn't do prior to that day. One of the first things people wanna know is how am I going to get things done while recovering at home? How am I gonna prepare meals? Or how do I get around? This is where you need to be ready. Arrange for some basic housekeeping and someone to help you with meal preparation. You'll need someone to take you to your doctor and therapy appointments. Oh, and who's gonna take care of your animal friends? During recovery, the last thing you need is clutter and obstacles in your way. Think of all the places you'll likely go and clear the way. Things like extension cords and footstools need to be removed so you can easily move about with a walker or crutches. Remove throw rugs so they can be a hazard. You might consider night lights in bathrooms, the kitchen, or along the hallway. Put some clean linens on your bed, have a place within reach for those important things like your phone or medications. Of course, you'll be using the bathroom, showering, and I'm sure you have other questions. So simply make a note and ask your therapist about those specific questions during your joint replacement class. A few days before surgery, you'll need to go in for a pre-op appointment. Bring your driver's license or some kind of legal identification, your insurance cards, a list of any home medications you're currently taking, as well as an advanced directive where someone can make decisions for you based on your expressed desires. It's important you don't burden your family with those kinds of decisions when you can make them yourself ahead of time. A couple of other important things to remember is to stop all blood thinners one week before surgery or as directed by your doctor. And finally, and I think most importantly, you need to be doing your exercises starting today. These exercises will help strengthen the muscles around your joints, sustain your range of motion, and help build endurance. Your participation in these exercises directly determines how successful your outcome and recovery will be. You'll need to be doing these exercises after surgery as well. Doing these exercises now though will help you reduce muscle soreness and fatigue caused by using a walker, crutches, a cane, or other aids. So find the motivation to get started now. You can review those exercises by going to the White Memorial Medical Center website and watch the videos of the exercises you've been assigned to do. You can also refer to the information packet with pictures and instructions for each exercise. Soon enough, you'll find yourself headed to the hospital, but you'll need to make sure about three important things the night before. First, call your surgeon right away if you have a fever, cold, or rash. Next, shower with the special soap you've been given. And lastly, don't eat or drink after midnight. These three things will help you minimize complications. Now you can have a good night's sleep knowing you're prepared. The day's finally come. Arrive at the hospital two hours prior to surgery. Let the concierge know you're having surgery and you'll be directed to the pre-admit area. From there, you'll go to the same day surgery and everything gets started. You'll change into a hospital gown. Your IV will be started. You'll meet your anesthesiologist and then your surgeon will come in and confirm your surgery site. Meanwhile, your family will be escorted to a comfortable waiting room. The next time they see you, you'll be sporting a new joint. I was out, I woke up, and, and I asked, when are we gonna you know, start? Uh, you're done. 
the passage of time seems immediate. The next thing you know, you'll be waking up from surgery in the recovery room where your vital signs and pain are monitored. Once everything's stable, you'll be transferred to the orthopedic unit. Oh, and don't worry about your family. Your surgeon will take the time to look for them or call them and inform them how things went so they'll have peace of mind. You're welcome, so glad it went. You'll be well taken care of in the orthopedic unit. There, you'll meet your nurse navigator, your nursing team, your physical therapist, your occupational therapist, and your case management team. During your stay, you'll have your vital signs checked frequently, day and night. Expect routine blood draws and dressing changes. They'll also be removing your urinary catheter within 24 hours as well. And they'll also be giving you medications to take at various times of the day, including before physical therapy. The physical therapist is going to visit you a couple times a day, and your occupational therapist will be there once a day. Your therapist will be there to teach you how to move from sitting to standing, transfer techniques, self-care activities, as well as walking with assistive devices. Don't be surprised when your physical therapist gets you out of bed and insists you walk on the day of surgery. That was a shot for me, I'd say, walk? He said, yes, we want to walk. And I did. During the period, you know, they come and get you up, I thought I couldn't do it. I, I wasn't going to be able to. I wanted to know right away if my joint was going to be working or not. That was my, my worry. The dynamics, they change the walking. The sooner they get you up, the better. And that's why uh, physical therapy helps. All the instructions from your therapist are important for you to remember so you can take the precautions necessary to prevent any harm on your new joint and to decrease the amount of pain you may feel. Now, while it's normal to have some pain, your nurse will help you with that. You'll be able to rate your pain on a scale of one to 10 and then be given appropriate medications. Don't let your pain get out of control. Just talk with your nurse or doctor. They're wanting you to have the best outcome with the least amount of pain. Before you know it, your hospital stay will be over. You'll probably stay for one night, maybe a day. The staff at White Memorial Medical Center will go over your discharge options. They'll be sure to arrange for any equipment you may need before you leave, as well as to have therapy, prescriptions, and home health arranged beforehand. They'll review instructions with you from your nurse and ultimately remind you of the importance of not only taking your medications, but encourage you to follow through with your exercises so you can have the best outcome. Finally, a friend or family member will be there to drive you home. You'll be assisted to your vehicle by a care team member where you'll quickly put to practice the things you've learned from your therapist over your stay at White Memorial Medical Center. Home won't be much different in terms of recovery. Continue to take your medications, but only as needed, weaning yourself. But keep up with the exercises, which will help you gradually build strength and independence. You may have home physical therapy or outpatient physical therapy, depending on your insurance. You know, I'm doing my exercise. A White Memorial medical staff member will call and check in on you, making sure you're doing well. Be sure to follow up with the surgeon in two weeks so they can also assure that you're on the path for a successful recovery. At your meals, sit in chairs that keep your knees lower than your hips. Choose a firm, straight-backed chair with armrests. Add a foam cushion or folded blanket if you need to boost yourself up a bit, but avoid sitting on soft pillows, as nice as that would seem to be. As much as you enjoy having the children around or your pets, you need to be sure small children are kept away or taught how to interact with you in ways that keep you safe. When you arrive at home, pets need to be kept in another area of the house altogether. No pets on the bed, on your lap, or anywhere close to your surgical site. All of your pre-surgery home preparation will help you avoid trips and falls, and having readied locations to place your phones and medication will help you avoid unnecessary reaching or bending. If you have stairs, not to worry, although you might need some assistance when you first get home. Consider installing handrails or make sure existing handrails are secure. 
Lastly, but just as important as your exercises is your hand washing and the incentive spirometer you learned about during your stay at the White Memorial Medical Center. This is going to be your number one defense in preventing complications. Complications like pneumonia or surgical site infections. The incentive spirometer, 10 breaths every hour while you're awake, walking, and sitting up in a chair while eating all help in preventing pneumonia. Understanding that these precautions will help you deter possible infections, you'll also find that exercises like leg squeezes and ankle pumps help in preventing deep vein thrombosis, or DVT. That's where blood clots form in one or more of the deep veins in your body, usually in your legs. You can also help prevent DVT with additional things like wearing anti-embolism stockings, taking your anticoagulants regularly, and again, simply walking. So exercise, hand washing, and the incentive spirometer. Those are your friends. Even after all the care you've taken, you still need to know the signs or symptoms of infection to be safe. Things like redness and increased swelling at the incision site, change of color, odor, or amount of drainage at the incision, increased pain at the site, as well as spikes in temperature above 101 degrees. I can't emphasize enough the importance of washing your hands. And if you're a smoker, maybe now's the time to quit because the doctor doesn't want you smoking. And if you're a diabetic, make sure your blood glucose is in control. You went through the trouble of having surgery. The last thing you want is to injure the area around your new joint. So follow the precautions provided by your therapist. Twisting and pivoting on the joint can cause you unneeded pain or even injury. Knowing how much you can bend is important, as well as how you support your leg or hip, depending on the type of joint surgery. You'll wanna ask your surgeon when you're clear to stop following recommended precautions. Strength and flexibility is what you need to aim for before and after surgery. Follow your exercise program faithfully. The White Memorial Medical Center has made it really easy for you to refer to all the things we've talked about as well as the exercises you've been assigned to do. Go to whitememorial.com slash hip and knee. All the exercises are available to review even on your mobile device right there at home. Remember, your participation is vital and is ultimately gonna help speed your recovery, allowing you to get back to the things you really wanna do in life pain-free. I can dance, I can run, I can walk, I can work after the surgery. I can walk without pain. Uh, I can walk faster than when I had the pain. I use my walker maybe when I'm uh, myself and home, but I, when I had somebody in there, I don't use it. Nothing, I just walk by myself. I knew it wasn't gonna be the same, but I wanted to know if it really was gonna work. It, it turned out to be okay.